Hi, everybody. I'm State Rep. Timmy Beeson, and this is Hay Bay City. State Rep. Timmy Beeson, you're so nice. You brought me two packs of delicious sausage this morning, which is which I love. <laughs> well, that's usually how I break the ice because uh, sometimes I get an opportunity while you're eating. I can actually speak, and then when you get done uh, taking a break, I can listen. I love it. Uh, yeah, I, I bet the gamemanship. I love what What kind of sausage did you bring me this morning? So today I brought the ones from my um, Uncle Pat, and I brought you the regular with cheese and then the teriyaki. And Ooh. I, so all the shops in town, they have something that's really good, all the independent shops, and I go to all of them, and I get the best one, or I, I'm part of the... I was a part of the association, and I knew what they won awards for. So I used to go to Larry's and get the Kakoska and the Polish dogs. You go yeah. over to uh, Craig's, or you go to JB's. There's everyone has something that you're like, oh yeah, and <laughs> you know you like it when you want two pounds, one for the ride to Lansing, and one to share when you get there. <laughs> yeah, it's such a great like road trip food. You just open it up and you and, and mowing down on sausage and nothing to like the um, stopping at gasp and but. Like here, if you buy it here in Bay City, it's half the cost of what it is on the road. So yeah, let me tell you, true. Let me, I'd rather leave my money here and every little shop. And I always stop and talk to them. And, and then I also get a chance to the opportunity to speak to the boss because yeah. when I'm leaving in the morning, that's usually still when the boss is there because it's really early in the yeah. morning. Do you have a Do you have a personal favorite from one of the other meat shops? No, that's what I'm saying. Like I actually can tell you, if you go to this shop, this is what you get. Yeah. And I try not to um, say that on the air because we want them to try all oh, the that's products. True. Go to all the local <laughs> meat shops because it's all good. <laughs> and, and we have a lot of them. We just lost another one. I think Larry's Market, but it's the regulation that comes to them. And that's why yeah. I went to Lansing because, man, you got to have seven licenses, a couple of variances, yep. three certificates just to do a barbecue at somebody's house. And the state – and that's what got me passionate about this. As I was ran my own business for 20 years, I'm a fourth-generation business owner in our own since 1911. Wow. And I still carry the licenses, but I'm working out of my um, cousin's or uncle's store right now. So. Okay. It's, it's, we'll, we'll, we'll get into you, you getting into politics in a second. I'm really intrigued by this fourth generation stuff. Tell me, can you tell me the history of this fourth generation? So business? my grandpa Henry, and I have it down in Lansing, he had an ice, basically ice company. And yeah. they had the sawdust box right over here on Marquette Street. And now there's a, actually, they tore it down part of it. And the other one is an auto, like an auto mechanic guy. But we would actually mm. cut the ice out of the Saginaw Bay, and they would have ice all season. Wild. And then he had a, um, basically, he delivered the dairy, because we had an ice a box. Every farmer would bring the milk and cream, and then he would take it with Betsy, his mule, and deliver it on our side of town in the banks. And they were known for, and that was Grandpa Henry, that started in 1911. So, great grandpa. It's, it's so wild to me. I was up interviewing a meat store up in Rogers City, and he took me through all the what used to be the ice lockers. Mm -hmm. And it, as a person living in 2023, we don't think about how you somebody had to make ice. Somebody had to get ice, and you had to store the ice, and that's how you stored food. And it's just, it just mind-blowing to me, and people are probably laughing at me at home, but... Whatever. Uh, well, and it's that's crazy. something that it wasn't till the second one was my grandpa Joe had a city dairy and a penny arcade and actually a oh, car wow. wash across from like visitation oh, really? church. Yeah. So we had that one and then we went to a city and then my father came back from Vietnam War. He was in the uh, Air Force and then he learned how to do swing beef so that before all this package was came in as a half a cow. Yeah. And that's when I was a young kid. I used to shovel the crushed ice into the unit because we didn't have refrigeration. We just had ice down the whole bottom and it seemed to work for a lot of years. All we did was take ice and put it and then you put the meat on top of it, on top of the kogel, on top of it. Oh, really? Yeah, so that, and it still works. You see it now coming back at these trade shows and food trucks, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, They, they yeah. can do a display with ice for four hours. So yeah. now there's no refrigeration and there's no electricity because sometimes a lot of our units require so much electricity to keep it cold and open it up the door where ice is, you know, and once it melts. Wild. Yeah, so it's, yeah, that was my job. Go get ice. So I spent like 45 minutes <laughs> from the ice machine and it was basically <laughs> my dad to be like, see, now you're learning how to earn a dollar. Yeah, so you grew up shoveling ice. Were, did you just continue working in family business as you grew up or so, how did that go? So um, as every um, young person does, right, they think they know better than their parents. Amen. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to show you. Yeah. I actually, Some of us still do, <laughs> mom and dad. 
<laughs> but it's funny how later in life you're like, wow, they were some of the smartest people I know. Yep. But you don't say that ever to your parents. Yeah. I know different than my kids in high school say that yep. to me, right? Yep. They think I'm uh, usually like I'm off my rocker. I'm crazy. <laughs> like I've never been in that same situation before, but it's fun. Yeah. It, but so, yeah. So then I actually right out of high school, I took a year off and I raced jet skis. I'm at Vanilla Ice. I w- was down living. What? In, yes. I li- I'm actually going to bring him back someday. He can ride a spree. In the pits. I, and that's what is why that, as someone who has never ridden a jet ski, what does uh, riding a spree in the pits mean? So that's a Honda spree. It's a scooter. Okay. Okay. He wasn't a good jet ski rider. He, okay. But his girlfriend was called Christy Carlson. They called her the bombshell. She was amazing. And, really? Oh, yeah. We, I lived in Fort Lauderdale with uh, Dave Van Verse, one of my friends from high school. We moved to Florida. We're going to show the world, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I found out racing jet skis in saltwater every day, right? It's harder work than um, <laughs> shoveling ice. <laughs> well, family business, but I yeah. did it. I had a, a lease. I ended, did. I, I stayed and I did my Fort uh, Lauderdale. I lived right out there on Commercial Boulevard, wow. and it, it it was very expensive too. And also, I had to win to eat. You know, you sure. don't. Yep. Uh, I yep. mean, I had some money saved, but I had to eat to, to make it because my father owned a family business. So I worked my entire life like. Money was not a problem. It wasn't about um, whether or not you can afford something. You can just get there before anybody else. Yeah, and right. you can afford anything you want. There's nothing that's out of your reach as long as you get up before everybody else and stay later. Yeah. They're really true. Even if it's a passionate thing, yeah. right? Like working you, hard. Work hard. You know, be the first one there. Like I was here early today. I, I you know, yep. you know, I missed you. But that's, I mean, I was already here waiting in your office because that's what we do. 15 minutes early is on time. Yep. And that's what's bestowed between my work ethic. But yeah, I went down there. It was great. Everybody loved it. All my friends came down for spring break. I lived right there in Fort Lauderdale. Uh-huh. Like it was, I'm going to tell you what, like a party, but then I realized I can't live that way very long because if I don't win and I, and it, my, I mean, back then my apartment back in Fort Lauderdale was $900 a month. Yeah. I split it with a buddy, but you got to have gas and you're driving yep. those jet skis every day. It was about $9 and I'm just doing the math. Right. Yeah. And if I didn't place first, second or third, you don't make any money. And I actually wrote a stand up jet ski when that was when the sit downs were coming in. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it wasn't like, it wasn't the one that everybody was given an extra bonus to, right? Like right now, like in, even in, and I see it even in Lansing, we give you an extra bonus right now trying to get you into a field that we're really short on people, right? We're helping to pay finally. Oh, now we're out of teachers. Now we're out of police officers. Now we're out of paramedics, right? Yep. Now we're out of nurses. Well, now these people have burned out and moved on and we've lost them here in our state. And now we have to figure out a way to get them back into the program. Yeah. So yeah, I did that. And I came back home and went to Delta. And- do, you re- do you remember the moment when you decided to come back home? Because people might be listening to this and they're thinking like, Man, you went to Florida and you're racing jet skis and you're eating vanilla ice and it's, you're living on the beach. Like, why would you ever come back? Do you remember the moment where you decided, hey, I got to move back? Well, besides for the money factor, right? Yeah. When you know people in your community, right? Mm-hmm. And you want to get a set of brakes. This is, if you can look this up, Florida goes through a lot of brakes down there. People drive radically different in Florida than they do here because mm-hmm. they're not familiar with ice, snow, uh, <laughs> slippery conditions, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they just go full blast. Well, I had a convertible... Uh, Cavalier and I went and got brakes and tires one time and I know what they cost here, right? Because uh-huh. I drove back and forth that year. I put almost 200,000 miles on my car wow. in a two-year stint. So I was driving back and forth, had friends up here, there, like going, you know, I got it, the world. And it really took me a long time to, I went to go do the brake job and up here, you can still get your buddy or a licensed mechanic yeah. around here to do a brake job, you know, two, 300 bucks. Yeah, It was 650 bucks. Oy. And that was just a front brake, right? I was like, yeah. And then instead of tires, and this is back in, this is 93, right? I'm like. That's expensive. Right. But down there, it's not expensive because the cost of living and everything is so much different. And that's what yeah. I always tell everybody. I'm like, yep. for me, I was thinking, that's way, I can't afford this right now. My dad knows a guy. We take care of a guy. We help a guy. We have a situation where, yeah, drop it off on Thursday. We'll pick it back up on Friday. You're all set. Mm-hmm. We need a couple hundred bucks, right? So I didn't get the brakes done down there when they gave me the quote. I brought it back with screeching. <laughs> <laughs> You're just grinding metal all the uh, way back uh, to Michigan. <laughs> even rotors, even in my, so when the brakes do have that screeching, I told that to my daughter the other day. I'm like, listen, you can't wait till it starts screeching, right? Yep, like, yep. They're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I, and my, my son, <laughs> I just turned the radio loud. I'm like, no, this is not what you do. So <laughs> if I turn the music up, I can't hear it. <laughs> but the sense that I knew when I got back to Bay County, right? Even coming back here, going to Delta and figuring out what I'm going to do with my life to live that lifestyle that I like down there, right? Mm-hmm. But maybe not. And I got in a bad car accident, put that work in with my body saying, okay, Mm. Jet skiing is extremely physical. Yeah, like it's like any other sport. Like it's a, it's not a hobby. It's your job. So you're on there, and it got to the point where you know it wasn't 
my body has a, a broken neck and a broken back. You just don't do that every day, right? And plan to later um, yeah. not be in it. So, can you tell me about your car accident? Um, yeah, it was my, and this is what happens when a young person, 17, thinks they know better than the parents and yeah. bird, burns a candle. Did it ends. happen here in Michigan or it, down in Florida? It happened here in Michigan, okay. uh, April 7th, 6, 10 in the morning, 1991. And my friend fell asleep at the wheel looking at some geese because we were out in Caseville. Um, staying up all night. He had to work at Prangy's. I had to work at the store. He mm. had to work at Open and I had to close. So I said, just get in and drive. And he fell asleep at the wheel. Oh, no. And no, it, 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 in, you know, it's the first time that my friend Adam, he actually wore his seatbelt. This was a bigger guy. Oh, we don't need seatbelts. You yep. know, yeah, yep. live life right to the fullest. You know, mm -hmm. that day he had his seatbelt on and I was just sleeping in the passenger side of a Cavalier and we had another car headed on. He just fell asleep. And it was just because we were going. We left steelhead fishing in Manistee. Yep. It was a spring break. It was like a 75-degree day. Like, we like we have one more day of spring break. And we spent it all fishing. And then we found out some of our friends from Garber and Glenn were hanging out at Caseville. So we're like, oh, man. Yeah, we got, let's go. Let's go. Like, I'll, he's, I said, we'll take my car. You can drive in the morning. So And he fell asleep at the wheel. And I woke up like seven, eight days later. Broken neck, broken back, both my feet. Um, wow. Yeah, it was pretty, it was bad. I mean, I probably took a lot of lives out of my parents. Yeah. And I can then imagine. they moved me from here. I had a great doctor here. Um, and um, then they moved me down to uh, Henry Ford. And uh, for my injuries, I think I was uh, like the third fastest person to recover. I was out, and almost six weeks later, I was out in a wheelchair trying to get back wow. to the jet ski. <laughs> wow, yeah. Get back to the water, baby. Yeah. So you, you came back and you went to Delta. What would you go to Delta for? What, what program? So um, so my sister was at MSU and she's like, you really need to go to college. You know, you can get a career. You can you do something, you know, and I was like, okay. So I said, I'll go back and I'm, I'm in business, you know, and I'm mm -hmm. back working for my father and um, and I'm working for the Honda shop because the Honda shop uh, was another place that I was, I love going fast and I had snowmobiles and I, I mean, I loved that speed, you know, mm -hmm. and I was back here and, and I was in business classes like you were taking your core right so i went a year and a half and my gpa got me into western michigan and eastern i applied and i'm like okay looks like i'm going to go to college at a big university right mm -hmm. and i decided western and <laughs> at the time you know i was still racing jet skis i was kind of still doing it just part-time but i still had a couple of jet skis i had a brand new chocolate lab i had my crotch rocket a yeah. portable hot tub like i am going to college <laughs> Yeah, love and, it. And I'm home on the weekends working, right, to make the lifestyle that I like, right? Yeah. I mean, I took the loans out for a college, and I, I paid them all off. And But you can do college loans as long as you're willing to work, right? Yeah. So I did it, and I was loving life, except for um, the guy that got in that car accident with me. He got a uh, fatal accident that one week uh, before exams. Oh, no. But that's okay. I came back and finished at SVSU, which is on uh, go cards. Uh, uh, but at, for one, one semester, I was at Western, and I had a lot of friends there, and I had a great time. Mm -hmm. Once again, still like living the life from uh, – yeah. but then I got to work and uh, got my degree from SVSU and oh, cool. uh, in business management. And I changed two or three times. Like I was going to – and, and this is what kids uh, – you should know. You might start at one thing. Yeah. You might finish up something different. And just be proud of your accomplishments. Don't look at what you've thought and all the extra credit that you spent. Yeah, yeah and, and folks listening at home, if you want to dive into that deeper, we've got an episode with Dr. Grant from SVSU. And we spent the first part of that interview talking about exactly that, about uh, he believes that it's so important to give kids experiences and information so that they understand what is available to them. And he encouraged that. Hey, you're going to college, you're making the best decision that you can at that moment. But when you step foot on campus and you get exposed to all these different classes and experiences and fields, you're going to change because you get more information. So I, I love that you encourage that because sometimes we go to college and I remember feeling that I was two years in and I was like, oh, I don't know if... I don't know if teaching is my thing. I really want to go to Michigan State for literature. I wanted to major in literature. And I tried to transfer, and they're like, they're, they wouldn't let me transfer because my math class day was a kind of a, a cluster. But I remember thinking almost like I failed or like I wasted time because I wanted to switch. So I love that, that you encourage that. Yeah, and, and a career is anything that you are passionate about that you can actually Pay your bills, right? Mm -hmm. And you can switch as many times as you want. I love my new job. I love it. Now, it does not pay like my last job, mm -hmm. but I'm figuring out ways around that, right? Just like you you got to figure out a way around that. And and that's what I did in college. Like I was a mechanical engineer. Like I'm doing it, right? Yep. And then I worked for Delphi and now I'm not a mechanical engineer, mm -hmm. you know, back when it was before it was Delphi. And so, um, and, but it was a great experience. I met wonderful people and I figured out when I had a chance to work in a job that was both union and non-union shops, right? So, mm -hmm. and it gave me a 
break from my father, which I told them maybe, and he's not here, he, he passed away in heaven, but I might have told them to um, take a flying leap on his <laughs> because I knew <laughs> like better. we all do yes. at one point. Yeah. Yes. yes, and I wasn't ready to buy the business or even get into it. And yeah. it wasn't until like, I had three classes left of my, then he's, I'm ready to get out. I'm like, well, I got three classes left. He's like, I'm going to get out soon. And my stepmom and him, I was like, you, we can't sell in the open market. We want you to have it. And I'm like, okay, I'm ready to go, right? So I didn't actually even have my degree until five years after I owned my business. No, 2000. Really? Yeah. So I actually, my first son was born. I'm like, and I saw the kids. I'm like thinking, okay, well, you have so many extra credits on top of a four-year degree. Yeah. You better get a degree because you married, I married my wife and she has a master's from MSU and a degree from Albion. Oh, and wow. I'm thinking... Yeah, don't ask dad. <laughs> the guy's don't ask don't, mom. She's yeah. the one with the master's degree. <laughs> and they still ask mom because uh, I didn't find out like until I was at SVSU that I was dyslexic. So I went through all the way through private school, all the way through high school. Really? My junior year, they got this guy taking a test and I actually had off two days a week to go to college. This is the best. So my father worked. I was full time. Even when I was in college, like you, I was salary. So he pretty much uh, through the family business. You get two days off. And I actually, before that, I only had one day off. So I love the fact that my bonus moms, he might not want to buy this business. You got to let him go to college. They didn't pay for a thing, but I had two days off. I'm like, I'm going to yeah. college, right? Yeah. So so it was awesome. I had Tuesday, Thursday class. Wow. And I took a class and they're like, that's why I try to do a lot of legislation for the dyslexia when I go to schools and talk to the kids. Yeah. Who likes these books? I'm looking at your books on the thing and I don't see very many picture books. And that's what I look for. I'm uh -huh. looking for, I can get along with Phil. Where's this picture book? Because <laughs> I don't yeah, learn. Sorry, these, these books have a lot of words. <laughs> yeah. And it's not, um, it's, not a, it's not a bad thing, right? But there are people like me. I'm like, listen. Yeah. So there's kids that raise their hand. I ask them, I'm like, who likes the picture books? And there's only three or four kids, right? I'm like, you guys are me. You guys can be state reps, right? Don't let anybody tell you different. Mm -hmm. There's a way that you can get there. Just figure it out. I'm, I'm going to add to that because we just ran a story on Tracy Arthur over in Auburn of Tracy's dance and tumbling. And she's also dyslexic. Pageant winner. She's American Beauties, Miss... Um, I'm blanking on the title, but she just won a, a pageant last year and she's running this business. And something that she said was it, really what you're saying is that, that you you have to figure out a different way in that, it, yes, it's an obstacle and yes, it's a challenge and it presents certain things. But at the same time, you, you, you figure it out. And she had such a beautiful conversation. She's such an amazing human. And then one of my personal friends, Ben Muldrow, travels the country, a, a national community branding. He's gone like 50 weeks a year. He's absolutely one of the most brilliant people I've ever met. Like you're having a conversation with Ben and you see just his neurons in his brain firing at a speed that is just incomprehensible. And I've known Ben for a couple of years and we met up in Detroit. He, he was working with a community down there and we met up at this ramen place to have some lunch and... He told me in that conversation that he was dyslexic. He had never mentioned that before. And we had this fascinating conversation for probably an hour and a half about how that, um, how dyslexia taught him to think about things in different ways and to fill in the gaps because he was like, well, I'm sitting in class and all of these fellow classmates around me are talking about things that they read in the book and they understood that I couldn't or I didn't. And so he had to figure out how to listen, learn that way, f connect the dots that weren't being said and think about things in a different way. And I was like, Ben, this explains so much of why you are so brilliant. And, and it was a beautiful moment because myself also struggling with ADHD, <laughs> like you, you just... You have to figure it out. Like one on one side, it is absolutely a challenge. I, I I don't, and this is just my opinion. I don't subscribe to the idea that it's necessarily a superpower. Like, well, you, you know, you're touched by God in that way because I do have significant struggles. But at the same time, it can be a gift if you're willing to confront it and say, "This is what I live with. I need to find a different way." And it can be lead to beautiful paths. And in your life, like Ben and I, I get to read people's faces really quick. Mm -hmm. I can understand it. I get it. Like it's, and I have four sisters. I didn't know if I mentioned that. I'm oh. dead middle only boy. <laughs> four sisters. Think about that in high school. Yeah. And, and even one was added on later. Like I mean, like they all are like, hey. Oh. They used to come to me more so than they're, I'm like, you are married? You have a husband? You have a boyfriend? Like, wh why? But I'm going to tell you, it's a different, and I couldn't learn like the rest. Mm -hmm. But it's really cool is in Lansing, 
And I should know her name, but she's on the minority um, Dem policy. And she actually, if there's something that they have for me to read, it, it, she said, hey, I can make it so that way you understand it if you would like. Yeah, adapting and, it a little. And if you saw my speeches, I'm like, yeah, I throw them back for him. Yeah, that's not how it's going to go. And, <laughs> I don't use, I, and I don't use a lot of three syllable words because I can't sound that. Like it doesn't, yeah. I sound it out with a middle, right? Yep. Like I see the word and I, then quick, but it's actually been fun because even on Facebook, um, some of my haters or, or dislikers, right? Oh, Timmy's dumb, this, mm-hmm. right? And I actually look at that. I'm like, oh God, if you only knew that I couldn't even spell your last yeah. name. I can't even read that hate comment from yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, and I hear that I, I can pick up a lot of the stuff and that's why I, I yeah. don't go cra- crazy with like big, huge um, things, you know? And I'm like, that's not me. That's not how I operate, you know? And I'm yeah. like, if they, when they do, and it's some of my friends that, cause my, two of my sisters are teachers, right? So, mm. oh God, I get, you know, hey, you gotta do, I'm like, yeah, or you gotta do you and you get, I let me do me, right? Yeah. And, and I appreciate the criticism, but uh, there's, I mean, and that's something that I, it's only one, and I think back in the day they might have said I, I was a ADHD, but yeah. I'm so old that they didn't diagnose that back. Right, in, and, and, right, and, right, right. And they put me in phonics classes, and they thought that, but my math was so high, but my reading was so low. Right, interesting, yeah. So, it, but you know, and that's the thing is trying to find how you get through life, right? But I have figured out that by cooking for people and actually figuring out what they like. And even specialties, like whether you have celiac, I can make for customers that have celiac. I can make yeah. customers that are gluten allergies. Like I can make it. And then when their significant other, their husband, their wife, their friend, their boyfriend, their family gets to eat it. And they're like, oh my gosh, this is really good. I'm like, yeah. I, well, no, all the time. I'm like, mm, no, it's kind of a, you get to hang out, you get to, you know, and then yeah. the, so that kind of brings them in. So. Oh, I love that. So, so you're running the family business, you, you graduate. How long were you running the family oh, business? So let's put it this way. And just to clarify for folks that don't know, wh- what is the family business? Where is it? So um, my family business was the Beeson's Market. At one time, my father owned all of them and sold them off to the cousins, except for my cousin, Ron. But we had five of them. Okay. And in 1984, he sold them all off. My parents got divorced and, you know, it just, it wasn't a structure. So he sold them off to all the other families that were Beeson's. So we had five of them in town, Freeland, Bay City, Cacolan, all over. Okay. And then they sold off and we kept the one on Euclid Avenue. Yeah. And I worked for my father. Actually, my first paycheck was 1984. And I always say, uh, my dad kept all the files. He was supposed to shred them and, you know, get rid of them. Yeah. As I'm looking up there going, oh, my God, the files are still on top of the Mark Malkin <laughs> cooler. I'm like, and he's passed away now, so I'm still cussing. I'm cussing. I'm like, yeah. really? You couldn't take care dad, of this? Dad, what did you do? <laughs> and I always t- tell my bonus mom, which is my stepmom, I say, um, didn't you think that any time he's, I don't know what your dad did with all that stuff. I'm like, well, I'm taking care of it now. And yeah. I can tell you <laughs> what dad did with it. He put it in that <laughs> so shelf. So I there. saw that how much I made back in, in 1984, and I was only 10, right? 10 years old, 315 was, and I made almost two grand in 10. And I'm like, oh, wow. Now I'm looking at my kids going, listen, you um, kids, like, (laughs) but during COVID, I can't really complain that my kids came to my rescue. My my workers came to my rescue. I got some money the first year of COVID to help uh, the PPE loan. I got that with a small business. um, And I paid it all. Like I gave everybody. And my son made enough money to buy himself a Corvette. I don't own a Corvette, but my son that was 16 does, right? So, but I mean, you don't, you got to make sure that they realize that they're, and my daughters, they all, we love feeding people. And that was the best part. Yeah. When during COVID, I fed people and it wasn't, it was on my own pocket. And then people saw that and they donated money. So every week we got to feed people during COVID. Amazing. That was kids. And it was so awesome. And they were so excited. Dude, that's the best thing. And I really, I, I really try to go to any, anybody that's hungry because it really makes a difference. Yeah. yeah those, those, those moments like COVID, um, it, it it really brings to the surface what kind of community you have. At the time, I was re- I was working really closely with the city of Saginaw, doing storytelling work over there. And, and you dr- you drive down the road, and uh, people have their literally the grills, their backyard grills, out on the street, cooking up hot dogs or burgers or whatever they could, throwing it in paper sacks and throwing it into cars. Schools are shut down a huge source of food for so many families and it literally neighbors coming out and just throwing food in. Same thing happened here, similar ways in Bay County. And I think that like in those moments, you see the, you get to see the best of people. Now that time was very stressful in a lot of ways, politically, personally, all of these things. So there is that, but at the same time, like y- you have people feeding people and you have people helping people. And you think about the frontline workers saying, I'm going to go every single day to work because I know I can help people. And like, it, it just, 
I, I wish we could focus so much more on things like that and say, no, this is who we can be even outside of times of great danger. Yeah, and that's a great point because I had to go to work every day. The mm-hmm. legislators went to work every day. And the people that, I mean, your your worker at 7-Eleven, she still had to go to work. He had to go to work every day to make sure that you had gas or so that the mm-hmm. people that were actually the police officers had to go to work every day. And we really didn't do anything for them. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be mean here, but the people that actually still got out of their house, right, mm-hmm. and had to do the job, like we really didn't recognize that those people because that's the only reason why our economy is still, I mean, it hasn't recovered yet. And a lot of our small businesses are, are done because our suppliers are gone mm-hmm. um, and not just, and they're slowly coming back, but we didn't recognize the fact that those people that kept it done, they're now that things are going back, they're like, they're burned out. They're like, you know what? Mm-hmm. Now it's time for the people that had a chance to stay home because they could work from the internet that they can help fill that void because man, I got to tell you, we're, we're still like, I was at the turkey roost today and talking to Todd, I call him Todd the turkey roost guy, but mm-hmm. you know, talking today and he's still, they have to be shut down until two day, Tuesdays on top of the big huge shutdown for Christmas because they don't have the workers. Yep. And we shut down my store that used to hire everybody from 14. So it did great during COVID. But the second year I got no help because my, I didn't lose enough money. We mm. shouldn't keep looking at whether or not your business lost enough money. But if you're barely making the payments, we got to figure out a way to not overregulate, overtax, make it so it's so difficult for them to do business, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's what I was like, you know, we, we lost it. Like when we give all this money to the big companies and I'm like, I'm kind of against that. And that comes and like we, the small business has all the jobs. Like this is your small business. You're mm-hmm. like, think about how many people you got going through here, right? Like you have to pay your bills. There's nothing there. I mean, you might get a grant to do something, but at the end of the day, you just want to be left alone to do the business, not with a new license fee, by the way, you're on the air. Mm-hmm. And we just hosed like, facility or groundwater groundwater people double the cost to do business i'm like this in lansing is just yeah that's why i gotta fight all the time well yeah well maybe that's a great segue into kind of this transition from business owner into politics had politics always been something that you were interested in or did it come about because of covid talk to me about first the interest so um i was never interested in politics i I am always interested in a lot of my friends around Bay County. I'm always interested in hanging out, having a good time, trying to figure out what's going on Mm -hmm. in your world or in my world. But what happened was a year before COVID, they've came out with some new licensee for our food establishment license. And they came in on, and I had a USDA guy come in on the day after Thanksgiving because I processed deer. Everybody else is shut down, right? And he came to me and he said, you're going to do this or else we'll shut you down. And I thought to myself, We have people coming from the state department, right? We have people coming from the bureaucrats in whether it's federal or state telling me what I better do or we're going to shut you down. I have a $300,000 payroll that isn't me and my wife that is actually people in the community. And why didn't you keep us open, right? When this Mm. guy came through, I thought, you know what? It's time. So then I went down to Lansing to talk about it and our current rep at the time. Didn't have time to talk to me. I'm not trying to be mean here, but because I never cared about whether you're a Democrat, Republican in our city. We're really good about this in our Bay County. There's a lot of them that are like on the Lions Club. You know what? What's best for Bay County is being put the right person in place that's going to be passionate that you can get a hold of and talk to. Right. Mm. It's nothing about having a person in party that you can't get a hold of. Right. It doesn't really matter. (laughs) So me and my father and I, we've always been Republicans, but my, my uncle's my same uncle, same business. He's a Democrat. We don't really care. We always got together and said, let's put somebody there that will have our back at any given time that we can talk to when something comes out. Mm. So when I went down to Lansing and the person at the time didn't have time for me, I picked where I was going to live. And I did that. You can go talk to Scott Everett. I picked where I was going to live, what I was going to do. And I came back home and I flipped a switch and said, I'm going to do this. Mm. Of course, I should have talked to my wife. Uh, <laughs> heads up right now. <laughs> that's, that's some sage uh, advice there. Before so, you decide to run for, for office, <laughs> well, well, you should talk to your wife. <laughs> and, and, and I maybe talked to her, but I didn't give her like, yes, I'm going. Yeah. And then yeah. I had uh, some friends of mine uh, that came in and, and actually was somebody that my sister taught, uh, a young man named Robbie Ranke, that mm. came and saw me and said, hey, you get through the primary. We'll talk to you, right? And that's it. Like I was like, oh, okay. So then, and and then the story. And I, um, and I at that time it was, you know, the COVID just kind of come through, right? Like uh-huh. it all of a sudden, poof, and they're shutting down businesses, and they're telling me when I have to be open, when I have to be closed. But um, I mean, that was a trying time. And in Lansing, it was really, it was crazy because there was everything that was normally there is all of a sudden just gone, right? 
And it's yeah. still... Yeah, and I do work for Michigan Economic Development Corporation, and I, I did a bunch of interviews down in downtown Lansing, and they'll tell you that, that overnight... 80% of their foot traffic disappeared simply because of the makeup of the community and this. And man, they're doing really fantastic things with downtown Lansing, trying to rebuild the community into a place to live. But man, it was hard. So that's funny you said it because remember how I talked about how I had raced jet skis? I yeah. also used to ride gas operated scooters like these little electric oh, scooters yeah. around but mine would go 38 miles an hour not 12 <laughs> miles an hour right so i was flying down I, I got my tie i got my radio i got my backpack because i want to cruise right you yeah, know yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't wear earbuds because i want to hear what's going on yeah right i got to check out everything in lansing because when you get out of session you don't there, there's nothing open i mean there there's literally nothing open and no no restaurant or bar it's open before uh, you can't even go um and hang out with other colleagues because there's nothing open right yeah so i got to spend a lot of time across the line bill um i got the figure flyer lime miles because yeah but i checked out they have the coolest like for kids and then when people come down there i can show them not just a great time in lansing because they give me a key to everything yeah that like hey let's go check out the senate let's go check out our house floor let's go do this i can take a tour with the kids and i try to do that and show them like I got it really, I'm not like, not the rest of the reps. I just can't sit still. Mm -hmm. um, so I got to go see the monuments. I can show you the downtown. I can show you spots that are like, they have their own kayak release. Like yep. they, they, yep. Have the, they have a, a bridge walk. They have a, a water side. Like people don't realize this. And I got to see everything in it, you know, cause uh, there's nobody there and nobody's on this. Like I got, it was my own playground for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. So if you come down, there's so much for kids. There's the activities down by the river. You can just, you know, there, there's so many activities going on all the time. Yep. And but now they just got to start bringing back the people because we also lost all the caterers down there because that's where I also got to be popular was, okay, I can cook and bring it from the business, all right, from my business and bring it down there and, and handle anything yeah. on the first day. Yeah. Have you eaten at Envy? Oh, listen, it's so Envy is, yes, and they also have a gluten-free without cross-contamination. So there's three reps, including Jamie Green. Oh, yeah. And, and there's even another one, that, one of the lobbyists that I have to like, if you're going to go in there, hey, let's go here because I know you have an allergy. And they'll be fine. And you're not going to hurt later. They're like, oh. Yeah. Veg Head is right next door to that. Yes. Yeah. Some killer food. Yeah. They have that. They have that. I just love their appetizers. But once again, as a freshman legislator, right, you go down there, you gain 15 or 25 or 30 pounds. <laughs> <The> freshman 15. <laughs> it's worse because you're meeting everybody and they're coming to your office with food. They're, they're, you're meeting them for food. Yeah. Like it, and you literally can eat ice cream every day of the week <laughs> when you're in Lansing for lunch. I, I love it. Maybe before we, we, we keep moving forward, um, break down. I, I love doing like 101s because we have conversations like this and we, I, I think it, we do a disservice when we assume that everybody knows, for instance, what the House of Representatives is. Like what exactly it is you do. So just give me, break it down for me. I'm not tapped into politics at all. I have no idea about Timmy Beeson. I have no idea what it is you do. So kind of break it down for me. What exactly you do in Lansing. Okay. So as um, running for this position, I knew I was only to Lansing one time. I mean, mm -hmm. literally, I was there for uh, a class trip and I probably got in trouble when I was at the class trip and had to sit in the bus or yeah. something. Yep. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, and besides the time I went down there. So a legislator goes down there and represents the 90,000 people here in Bay County. Actually, we have 103, I think. Uh, but, 103. Yeah, but was the I, I can only represent 90. So the northern part is Mike Holdley. The oh, Auburn God. part is Beerline. <laughs> the crazy little part of Bay Midline Road is Shooty. And um, yeah, so we are represented by a few, which I'm in great close with all of them. So if there's ever a situation, I bring him into that yeah. meeting. Um, so you go there and you re represent 90,000 people. And basically... I'm your go-to, not for, hey, the snow wasn't removed in front of my house today, but hey, I'm having trouble with um, getting meals for my senior, getting help. I can, I get them the link, right? Hey, I'm mm -hmm. having trouble with my beer and wine license. I put it in six months ago and the state still hasn't did anything about it. They call my number at the, the 517 uh, number and they call my office and I can be the person to get that done or help mm -hmm. assist because they don't know where to go. Yeah, that makes sense. So you had, and just to, to repeat what you're saying, local issues, local governments, social issues that might require some kind of state help or uh, some new legislation or removal le legislation, something that's a little bit higher. I don't want to say higher level because that has a connotation, but at like broader reaching, Correct. they would approach you. Yes. And yeah. I stay out of, and this is where everybody does wrong in state politics. You stay out of local. You listen. 
Mm. And if you can see you can help them, right? I can help you how you can get a grant or how you can get money, or I can see where we can help fund some areas or where we're really lacking of funding. It, it, and then that's the thing is it's always like a ask at the state level yeah. to use the state dollars to fix something that we're having a problem with, you know, right, and you right. can't fix everything, but you can actually, if you start kind of pinpoint where you, where we're hurting. And so that's what, so that's what a state rep does. And now, uh, and that's a little bit different than our, our state senators because there's 110 of us. So there's 110 people representing, you know, Michigan in the counties and they all have 90,000 people. Yep. So it's kind of cool. Um, and I got to do some I really felt great yesterday when I got to bring a house speech on the floor and you get, and I really recommend you pay attention to your legislators when they do, um, when they're in committees, you go to a committee or go to on the house floor, right? Because this is the only time that, that you can see how they're representing you. Right. And I got mm. a chance to stop, um, or talk about the fact that we need to have sunset rules because an oversight, otherwise the departments that people that are not elected are making the rules and if they make it so the laws so that they can continue to make rules increases fees hey by the way now your place here used to be a 150 dollars fee to be on the podcast now we're going to make it a thousand dollars and you're like that's you know and if you don't have anybody to call that you elected right we've made it so that our system is kind of broken mm. so so as a state legislator um you, you're down there every tuesday wednesday thursday uh we're in session um and then and you go to committee meetings in the morning so or afternoon. Okay. And then people come there, say you're interested. Maybe we're like, hey, there's a new um, fee at the state that are coming out for podcasts. Because, you know, everything gets regulated, right? Yeah. And the problem is regulation is good as long as it's beneficial. Mm. The minute you regulate something, right, just to regulate to make more money for the state, that's when people leave our state because it's easier to do somewhere else. And being that you're on podcast, you can come up and have a license at a different state. And mm -hmm. if we start making your job, right, like it's overwhelming to do your job in our state, you're out of here. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, especially with the way the internet is, it doesn't work for the service industry, but it does work in your industry. Yeah, yeah, makes a lot of sense. I love your encouragement to really tap into legislators because with social media and hearing information, third hand, fourth hand, fifth hand, sixth hand, not the greatest way to be engaged politically, but here you can watch your legislators, you can talk to them, you can really find out information on your own so that you know what's happening and what to be, what's true and what's coming down the line and things to be aware of. And I, I love that encouragement. Just to, to, here's an opportunity to directly engage and we should do that. We should yeah. do that more. And it's – everybody's well, I'm on Facebook. Listen, Facebook or Twitter, whatever your social media platform, right? Mm -hmm. If you really want to see the real platform, go watch it right live. You can watch Session. You can watch yep. every day. And people don't realize that. Instead of getting a piece that's been twisted by the time it gets to yeah. – and you get y'all fired up. And I always tell everybody, get involved. I don't care if you're Democrat, Republican. If you're going to go do something about it, it's way yep. better than, hey, you're my rep. Um, I expect you to do it. Well, I'm only one person, mm -hmm. and I always tell everybody. And I said, I can probably see eye to eye with most 95% of the people in our beautiful county. Like, I love Bay County. Like, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I grew up here. I, I can tell you all the stories. I can tell you the best spots to hang out when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, even when I was in Fort Lauderdale, I missed the idea that coming back home, when you were rolling to Bay City exits, right, you, it, it brings back, okay, that's why we used to go to every day to, to college and yeah, yeah. man, you don't get there at five minutes to eight because you can't turn on <laughs> Bay Road off of 75. Like, yep. you know, and yep. you're, you're kind of, even when you come over the under, up 23, you know, you, when you come past some of the stuff, when you're coming back home, you're like, God, that's, you know, I'll always have a home here in Bay County. I fish, I hunt. I love the snow as much as I, it's not as much as fun anymore, but now that you have the gigs, like uh, you go out yeah. and you are ice fishing in, in a shanty and it's fun because when you're younger, you don't have that kind of money to buy a shanty. You're just like, Bleh. yeah, you're just sitting out there on a bucket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It makes a big difference. Yeah. How'd you get into the outdoors? Your family hunt? Or? Um, yeah. So my dad did hunt, but it's funny because my dad only hunted deer and rabbits, but he didn't really get into the ducks. But some of my um, growing up, some of my best friends, the Haver Camps and the Wall Ravens, and they would we would all go hunting the gosslers. So, so you know, and it's all about um, being better. I'm very competitive. I mean, oh, I yeah. have four sisters, but I like to be the best, whether it's euchre, <laughs> cards, hunting. Yeah. And some of my friends that keep the log, like this Mr. Taylor, Ryan Taylor, of another friend, he keeps the log of how many um, animals we um um, take or harvest a day, yes. right? Uh -huh. And we looked at the log later in life with the pictures, right? Uh -huh. He always seemed to get more than <laughs> us. And this sounds like somebody's cooking the books. Uh, well, you know, so, and he's like, well, did you do the log? I said, I think I remember. Do you remember that day? So, so 
pictures and that kind of history, right, is, yeah. is really important, especially in our area. We've got some of the best hunting, the yeah, best fishing. It's true. And, and even like right now, there's new legislation coming down for commercial fishermen. I mean, we have a walleye. As much as we have walleyes in the bay, we have the DNR telling us a number and how many the the fishing people are taking, and because they can't commercial they can't commercial fish walleye in this state. But at some point in time, they're not taking enough for the population, and it's, we're gonna have the same problem that mm. we are with deer, right? Yeah, I believe something just came out regarding deer this season as well. Well, yeah. I'm trying. We're trying to make it so that way we go back to hunting and harvesting instead of um, waiting till they're dead on the side of the road, right? Because mm -hmm. then we also have the cost. Because nobody ever looks at that, right? Like, or who do we call? So that's kind of fun. I went to a road commission meeting. These are the kind of things like if you don't get the answer you want, then that they call the state. And I'm like, let me direct you and figure out how we can help you. Yeah. Yeah. So, Personally, what do you love about hunting, fishing outdoors? So I'm not a good deer hunter, right? Because you and I go deer hunting and I have to be quiet. Yeah. You and I would not be a good. Now, yeah, if you have a hundred percent, yeah, like, but, but duck hunting or bird hunting or even rabbit hunting, cause I have two beagles. My yeah. neighbors not, might not like my beagles, right? <laughs> Sorry, neighbors. But, but I've learned to bring over food to the neighbors, right? So yeah. they like, we're, it's we're kind of a win. It's a win, but they're like, oh, we don't even hear them anymore. It's just like the snowmobiles on the, on the Cocoa River when they got buzzed yeah. by the first year, you're like, oh my God, do you hear them? After a while, you're like, no, that's recreational. We want it. It's very cool to see that as this past year, I think, was so pivotal for the uh, our community really asserting itself in the outdoor world. I mean, you had two professional bass fishing tournaments here, purses of over $100,000. Like No other community in the entire country had that. But we did. And the Tom Brady of, of fishing just right. comes here and just loves the place. I, I, I love that kind of stamp of approval to say that we have something here in this community that no one else in the country has. And I think even if you're not a fisherman, I'm, I'm not a fisherman. I can't sit in a boat for more than 20 minutes. But even if you're not a fisherman, that's something like you put you walk with your chin up just a little bit higher because this is a place that is in some ways unlike any other place on the planet. And I, I love that. And you're right, because they come up and down the Kakaon River and I tell them where to go. Hey, there's yep. a train up here to the right. We usually do pretty good. Underneath the bridge, the second one has a deep hole and they're yep. fishing. Like, Thanks, boss. You know, 100%. And, and hey, if you need a bathroom, we have that community, not just fishing. It doesn't matter whether it's out there at the state beach with a wellness run. They yep. have that, you know, and all the people open up their houses down the state park and out there on the, and we really have a, and everybody's like, well, and it's hard to dive into everything, right? As a state rep, like I love to go to, I mean, and see the new yep. manufacturing. Yep. And I, I like to try to do as much as possible. And I'm always like, hey, what do you got going on? And I like to actually, I like to more go as Timmy Beeson, the butcher, or mm -hmm. Timmy Beeson, the, the meat guy, right? Mm -hmm. Because they treat you different, right? Yep. That, and as a state rep, they're like, they kind of hold off because they don't realize that the state rep is just a person, right? No mm -hmm. difference than that police officer, no different than your person. Yeah, you can reach a lot of people, right? But at the end of the day, right, I'm just a dad trying to figure out how to raise three kids, right, that are always thinking that I'm, um, you know, not as educated. Yeah, <laughs> I, I love that you say that because as a person that works with lots of different communities and has lots of different interactions with all kinds of local governments, that, that, that is really the theme that I've walked away with is that, that sometimes if, if you don't interact with your local government, if you don't know them as people, you, you can really fall into this perspective of, it's citizens versus them. But right. all it takes is a couple more seconds or minutes of thinking to think, well, they are citizens too. This is their community as well. And they're, they're not walking away with an, another 10 grand in their pocket every month because they go to these meetings on the very opposite of that. But these are citizens who, even if you disagree with them, um, there's something in them that said, I want to be in this position to fix something in this community or to help this community in some way. And I think that that's honorable. Yeah. And I think that some politicians do the job because of the title and some politicians down in Lansing do the job because they, they want Michigan to, to win. They really do. Yeah. Right. Like any job. So, so we've got great doctors and not and great yeah. you know, and, teachers and, and not. Yep. And what do we do? We always like debut the ones that don't. Right. That ones, the ones that get in the limelight are the loudest ones that are really mm -hmm. destructive. Right. Instead mm -hmm. of the ones that are if you need. I always tell everybody this. If I need a bridge. Right. Or individual project to get reelected, I'm not your right legislator, right? Mm. And I always tell them, if you need some kind of big amount of money, yeah, and they're like, well, we need money for this. Everybody needs money across the whole, I mean, it doesn't really matter whether you're going to do the lead water, right? Mm -hmm. Or infrastructure or out of power or for seniors. My big concern in our area is seniors trying to figure out a new where 
where they can hang out, where they can walk, where they can get the food, right? Because yep. I have the oldest population in the entire state. Yep. It's 62 and a half. So if you live here, I'm glad because you're bringing it down, right? But with mm-hmm. the redistricting, I, it's 62 and a half. It might even be older. They haven't given us my, my, my age. But you know what? So that's saying that, right? How do I keep these people, right? So they stay here because we don't want any more taken off to Florida, mm-hmm. right? right? But I mean, at the same time, they're like, you know, you know, like the tax structure is not beneficial, right? It's not. And that's why when we, if we have a community like you're trying to do, but like I'm trying to do where it talks about how cool Bay County is, I always tell everybody I got the best, I got the best county in the whole state. Yeah. I'm very encouraged talking to, cause we're along these podcasts and these stories, I've got this kind of series of talking to 20 somethings in, in Bay County to see what their perspectives of this place are. And I am so encouraged. I feel myself like aging out of that population very quickly. <laughs> but at the same time, it's so encouraging to me because like I just talked to, to Steve Prince and Nicole Horn, 20 somethings, and they bought an old house here in Bay County, Bay City, and they're, they're renovating it and they love it for all these reasons. Michaela Garcia ran a story on her, Ryan Glum, like all of these, the, Michaela lived in Detroit. Ryan had a, has a job in Flint, but lives here and works remotely. You have all of these really young people here in Bay County that that see it for what it is, and then they also see the potential for what it can become. And they're starting events like Proje- uh, Project Zorro is is happening at, at Historic Masonic Temple next weekend, um, from when we recorded this. And you've got like sixty plus musicians from Bay City, but all across the Great Lakes region like rap and hip-hop and all of this stuff and that came from that group of people saying i love this our community should love this too let's start an event and they're investing at a personal level and creating really interesting things that i'm too old for (laughs) that like i i would never have come up with ben champagne from saginaw Mm -hmm. comes in here and those like runs killer events and I, i so i love seeing that and that's one of the greatest parts of this work is I get to talk to these I don't want to call them kids but young adults that are saying I love it here and let's I'm gonna not only love it but I'm gonna bring something to it I'm gonna add to it in some way I love it and, and that's the best part of with the with me being in business owning my own business for the twenty years right I I got to see the 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 hardship that it is hard to make a business successful, but yeah. understanding those employees didn't have to worry about a paycheck while I was there. And yeah, sometimes I had to borrow money against my credit card to make payroll. But guess what? When you're in business, right? Or, you know, when you're living paycheck to paycheck, right? You've got to figure out a better way. And we give the opportunity for people. I always like to be, I don't like to be told what I can't do. Mm-hmm. Just show me what I need to do. And I'll, I will show you that yeah. we can get it done. Yep. And that's what I love when people call me, I need help with this or, or Hey, and I also get to go teach kids, and that's the benefit of this is I get to go into the schools and kids' breakfast burritos, right? Mm-hmm. And I show them, right? I show them with the tree, so I show them with the pictures. That they, everything that I'm cooking, you have this in your fridge at home. You mm-hmm. have, you might have seen this, right? You don't know what it is? Let me show you. Mm-hmm. you these are eggs, right? And when you have teach third graders, fourth graders, sometimes even high school kids, like who, and you have them raise their hand. How many mm-hmm. of you guys have actually broken an egg and cooked it? And they mm-hmm. don't raise their hand. Man, that's a skill that should be happening at second, first, in front of your kids. Like as yep. soon as you can, as soon as they can eat, right? And mm-hmm. you're going to be gone and you trust them to watch kids. And I mean, they should know how to cook They yeah. should because it's so much less expensive, right? Being honest. And they do that in their eyes. And one even kid, I uh, come up to me, I think it was at the basic Academy. And he said, I'm going to tell you I'm a picky eater. And I said, <laughs> okay. He said, I don't think I'm going to like it. I said, okay, but let me tell you something. Don't, don't not try it because you don't like it. Tell me what you think after you're done. Yeah. He got done eating and he said, can I have another? And I said, <laughs> whoa, whoa, there's only one a piece. I mean, if you, yeah. so, and the idea is like my homemade chorizo, right? Like they're like, well, yeah. where do we get that? And after that's the biggest thing is because as my business is shut down and I'm in limbo, I don't want to not be there for the customer. So I'm just trying to get back into building all my products again yeah, yeah. at my cousin's, at my uncle's store yeah. and doing a little podcast. And it's fun, right? It's yep. fun, but it's more so that people, I would like to teach people how to do it because it's so much less expensive than buying it from, um, especially the fast foods or the foods. Like yeah. I love those companies too. There's a time and a place, but eating there four or five days a week, 
yeah. is not about convenience anymore. Now we we've lost yeah. eating out eating food that's actually closest to the actual ingredients of what we want. You know, salt mm -hmm. and pepper is really you know you don't need a, a lot more unless you're you know you're going to use a seasoning like yep. a cayenne if you want to make a hop. Get back to the seasonings and less sodium nitrate because I make a lot of stuff that's nitrate free and oh, chemical nice. free and, and it's fun. And when people, I even had uh, maybe you haven't had him on. Oh God, he's a singer, but. He came and made sausage at my store, right? And he thought that it was the coolest thing, right? Yeah. And I got him like just working it. And I got him in a small casing because I know it's really hard to do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> you can do it in a, in a Polish casing. Yeah, And right. uh, Yeah, and uh, it's kind of a, it's fun. It's fun. Push to the limits of sausage making. Let's jump back to your your role as a rep. Um, what kinds of things, since you, you've taken office, what kinds of things have you worked on? What kinds of things will you be working on? I love this opportunity of... Here, here's a chance to, to keep people in the loop or get them into the loop. So give me kind of an update of what you've done, what you're doing. Okay. So the first year, so last year was my first year as a state rep. Yep. Okay. It's a two-year term. And with a new public act, we, I can do that up to six terms for 12 years total. Okay. What's probably the smartest thing, I voted for term limits back in the day, but as a state rep now, um, it's a, a great uh, opportunity that we can hold our reps accountable, but we also can make sure that we can hold our departments down there accountable. Because before, when you're only there for six years, you're basically just learning. Like I'm learning, I'm, I'm past that learning stage, but that first year, year and a half, yeah. it's all learning. It's you, true. You, you don't know. And even if you worked in Lansing, right, it's different as a state rep, you, you know? Same thing at the local level. You come on as a, as a new commissioner, new council member, you obviously haven't done that before and Correct. so the, it, it, there is a learning curve just like learning getting a new job you're not going to walk in and say well i know how to run that exactly how my boss does it's going to take you some so, time to get your feet on it and i really like that i came from a business background because we have a lot of people in lansing that are running our state not in a budget that's uh sustainable mm. kind of like growing up right like you think that you can afford it and we're hoping that we're going to afford it and we're going to hope that it's going to take off instead of planning for the future. And that's what we do wrong as our state. But that's another whole conversation in the House. Um, it's still a little different in the Senate, but there's 110 of us. So there's only a couple of, of representatives that can even have a little say because it, they need 56 votes. I represent Bay County, right? Yes, we have a senator that represents Bay County and Kristen's doing a good job to make sure that, but that's, she represents 240,000 people. I represent just Bay County, 90,000 people. Mm, mm. So I'm a little closer and she, and some things that she might be close, but I, than I am, but she has to be close in all three counties, right? Mm -hmm. So that does make a difference. So, um, and that's cool because I, I've, I, I know where to go. I know how to get there. I know how to get things done. You know how to do a bill. There's a lot of that stuff that when you're coming into a new job, man, it's like, Mm -hmm. And yep. they always make a joke about the bathrooms, but you can find the bathrooms pretty quick. They're like, oh, you find the first two years, you don't even know where the bathroom is. Yeah, yeah, you find those pretty quick, uh, especially when you, because I am a, a, I always would go down to Lansing and I'd have a coffee, right? Yeah. I don't ever wear my clothes to Lansing <laughs> until I get there. Smart move. Yep. Well, I mean, I'm like, oh my God, I'm with the two ties this week. And, and you got to pay for dry cleaning and all that extra, right? Yep. Cost. Yep. That all comes out of the bottom line. That doesn't come out of, um, there's no state paying. And that's what people don't realize, right? Yeah. And, and uh, I mean, I actually, took this job, right? And thinking, oh yeah, it's going to be, you know, I'm going to make, no, yeah. hindsight, right? Compared to a private. And that's why we also don't get good legislators. Now people are like, well, you're complaining. I'm like, you are down in Lansing away from your family three days a week, sometimes four. Yeah. That's a little bit of a check. Yeah. And then you also can't dress like you're dressed right now. You must have a shirt and tie on. Right. Yep. And you also have to um, go to functions and some things yeah, they do buy a dinner once in a while, but you are driving all over on your own dime to and from. And you're, the biggest thing is you're away from your family, right? Mm -hmm. I missed the chaos of three kids in high school. Oh my gosh. I mean, I grew up with four sisters, so I always had one I could go like yeah. butter up, right? But with three kids here in high school and they got me, I was excited about this job and I love doing it and I will do it for Bay County as long as they keep me elected, you know, and mm -hmm. I'll take a call from anybody at any given time. And I do walking in, even though that it might be, it doesn't feel right, but I'm like thinking, I have, I have, I've been blessed. My sisters have take all the credit because they put me in situations that only, I um, can only imagine. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I, I love that you say that because I, before I started traveling for work, I had this really, um, uh, kind of romantic notion of traveling around. And at first it was, but we, we had one daughter and she was uh, t two at the time and so she wasn't really aware that I, like, I'd be gone for three days and whatever like you come back and it's like you, you never left but then we had the twins and now Evelyn is older and um, now I'm very conscious of the toll on myself on my wife on the family of leaving and now I'm getting like 
Dad, do you have to leave? It's like, yeah. Oh. So it is, it is, that is a tough thing. And you're right. And my wife, I mean, her name is Lisa, but she is a saint, like dead opposite. Like I'm crazy wild. She's the shyest one, right? Yeah. Like like, (laughs) indirect expert. It's dead opposite, right? But it works. And I mean, we're even, she says she's more of independent, but I will see. Um, She still supports me, right? And I support her, but I'm going to tell you, I miss, I can tell when the kids are getting to the young adults that we have now because she might use the word freaking. I'm like, (laughs) 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 and you know, as much as that says, right? But I am, I, I am missing that, right? Because I had chaos my entire life. She has a sister. That's oh, all. I mean, yeah, a, a yeah, yeah. wonderful person. Um, but I, right, I had four sisters, right? Like it was never. Always chaos. Dude, there's, yeah. I mean, it, it's down. It's like that. Like you, you mm-hmm. take your sister's hairspray and you just spray it all <laughs> with a, you make sure you just, you know, you can, you know, eat all the food, hide it. They don't know there's a freezer downstairs because it just is all in front of them, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was um, growing up, you know, there's always, you know, you have your older sister that is always, oh, it's okay, right? Like that mom, sister that, well, she uh-huh. moved away, right? So then I, yeah. you know, but I am, I'm, pretty blessed but i really do feel like that's what i miss most when i'm in lansing it's not that i'm not meeting new people and and doing what i need to do down there for bay county to get the political chips when we need it most i can use them it's that's not where i'm winning i'm doing that i'm doing everything and everybody the democrat republican they know who i am down there they know i'm a straight shooter they know that there's a good chance i'm going to bring them food so let's have a meeting with timmy because we don't have nothing on the thing And, and the other side is just the opportunity right to see where we're going in Bay County and w- what we can do, right? What we yeah. can offer. So that's the, I, I love it. Yeah, I love so, it. Well, something maybe that you're working on now, looking forward oh, to the future? Okay, oh. so so my first term when I was in the majority. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Okay, yep. so I actually got a lot of things done um, and things for the like the Bay um, Veteran, which was one of the, our things with our Bay County veterans where I got the money for it. Yeah, the so workshop. Yep. Yep. And I, which is great, by the way. Right. It's fantastic. So, Went to the ribbon cutting and it's yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's a beautiful place and I, I like those guys and I, I get behind because they are seniors. They are people that are struggling. They, they need somewhere to go besides the AMVET, right? I mean, I'm a son's, a son's American Legion, but yep. that's all surrounded by booze or beer. And maybe not, maybe not. But so once again, right? You got to have something else for everybody, and right? As someone who used to work at a business making stuff with their hands, there's, there's a certain kind of therapy. There's a certain kind of um, calming. There's a certain kind of experience that comes with learning a new skill, making something cool, and then giving it to somebody or having them buy it from you. It it fills you as a human in a completely different way. And that's what I love about the, the shop. People that, that haven't made anything but with their hands, you as a, so making that sausage, like there's you, you're proud of it, and then you see that affirmation from they love it too. That is such a great experience for our veterans. So I, I love and, that place. And as a state rep, that's huge down there because Rep Tulio, right? Like he's a Democrat rep that uh, is one of my best buddies down in Lansing. Like he owns a business, like we get it, right? Mm-hmm. He tells me about everything. Like, so all the reps come in and tell me what they made. What do you think I could do different? I'm like, well, I didn't really try it. They don't want to bring me samples. Andrew Frank does a good job. But I, I well, maybe if you just try this seasoning, see what happens. So like, oh my gosh, it's so good. I'm like, <laughs> and they always talk about how they're going to bring back samples, right? I can tweet, but then sometimes, but that right there, right? What you said is having somebody come in. I'll have you come in and make some sausage. You can pick your favorite sausage, and I can have three different recipes. We can try it. We can throw it through my Uncle Pat's deep fryer, right? You can try it right there, Fun. and your end result, you get to see it, right? And you've made something, and, and that is – that. I That's agree with cool. you 100%. That's cool. Anything else you want to recap from your first year? Um. So, oh, uh, I also – I got a – so when everybody was trying to get money, being more on the fiscal conservative side, right, we left $9 billion on the balance sheet because we didn't need it to balance our budget. Mm. And that also made it so that your taxes and my taxes got lowered at a 4.05. And it continue, it would continue to go down if we would have left that surplus sitting there to make it so that people want to stay here because of a tax. Another, I mean, we want to make it so that you keep as much money as possible. Don't give it all to the state or, you know, let's keep it so people want to stay here or mm-hmm. have the, at least the same opportunity that other states are doing it right. You mm-hmm. can tell when people are moving to that state, they're doing it right. When mm-hmm. people are leaving your state, you're doing it wrong. Mm. It doesn't matter about anything else, right? Common sense, the raw data says coming there. So that, I mean, if we're can try to bring it back with this community, like we got to figure out. And the reason why we left that money there was because we didn't need the money to balance the budget. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like that $9 billion was a lot of money that was surplus money that came from the federal government. Well, we spent it this year and it's all gone. Mm-hmm. So that surplus money is gone. And yeah, they talk about one-time buys. The problem is... I would have wished we had left four or five or seven billion still there. We didn't need it because next year I am a legislator. I will have to figure a way to cut a lot of money because it's not there, right? Mm. So it's like taking a lotto or, or a thing. And I get it. Like all these things need to be done. Well, 
a lot of things in this world need to be done, right? Or a lot of things are wanted to be done. There's a difference, right? But I did get um, my first term, last term, with the help from Mary Whiteford from the DHHS budget. I got $5 million for our first in-bed psych ward for 17 and under because our kids were very, mm. I mean, they're, it's, it's, and I got the money here sitting here, and I think that uh, McLaren's picking it up so that we'll have our own psych ward for young kids. Because, I mean, what do they have now is, is care. Like, we don't have spots for all the we only have, I think at that time last year, we only had six to 700 beds for kids under the age of 18 mm. when they're doing something or aren't figuring it out, right? So I, I was excited to get that um, uh, as as much as I try to do for other areas. And I also got some money for the Boys and Girls Club to get rid of their asbestos so the kids aren't playing. And uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. and uh, we're going to try to run a cooking program over there because we need to keep, teach kids not just at the ISD, but we need to teach kids food safe certification so they can handle all these jobs because once again you go to every one of these restaurants they're looking for cooks they're looking for wait staff they're looking for people that yep. have the That's qualifications true. and that job right i'm telling you whether i worked for tucson jacks downtown which was rookie vet i worked at mulligan's i've worked at a lot of the places and establishments and i even go help out still i'll go do dishes or just show up okay because i'm ready to work and they're like they, they don't even know i'm a state rep and i i like to keep it that way because then i hear what's going on yeah, right? yeah, yeah i don't mind getting my hands dirty like my dad studied me at the worst job ever and he always said if you can do the worst job, you can do the highest job. Yeah. And, and you, nobody starts at the top. And if they do start at the top, they come out have like a little bit of a, a jaded edge to them, right? Yep, that's true. And I, I like to learn from the bottom up. And that's what we teach kids from the bottom up. And that's why I try to keep these any business that can hire a 14 or 15 or 13-year-old kid like I did. I could hire right down to 12 you know, with working papers and do it all the right way, right? Teaching them just to get off their phone. And tell them, mm-hmm. you don't get punched in. If you go take a text, you sign a piece of paper. If you take a text, right, you are stealing from the clock. They don't even look at that like that, mm-hmm. right? But they'll stop and actually look at their clock and not wait on the customer. I'm like, come on, guys. Like, you know what? And that's the kind of stuff that little businesses teach work ethic. Yeah, soft skills. Yes. Like that. Yes. As far as things that you're looking forward to the future working on, tell me that. So I've, so as now, um, so I'm in minority for one more year, at least. But I mean, and everybody always thinks that they're shooting for the bat. So hopefully we are out of minority. So it's a check and balance again. So it's even though that we won't have two of the thing, two or three of the one part, because then more dispay, more, more, mm, you get a lot better conversation, right? Mm. One, one way thinking is, if you think one way is thinking good, right? Just try to do what you should do to decorate your house and see what the wife says, right? I would have all my decoys and all my, <laughs> I'd be thrown out, right? Like yeah. I, she would walk in and say, no. No, in fact, I, I took them all the Lansing because they don't even come. Like your mom say, they go out in your pole bar, right? Yeah. Like, so I'd be like, hey, get fish wallpaper. And, yeah, yeah uh-huh. right? put, so, put that marlin up on the wall. Yeah. Well, well, and I probably don't, I don't really stuff too much from, because there's so many cool animals that we can hunt here yes, and, and harvest true. and get a picture of before, you know, and there's so many. Um, plus, I'm a, I want to hunt things that there's a lot of so I can shoot a lot, right? Because yeah. that's the most fun. And, yeah. and, and you know, and fishing, I want to go after the perch or the, you know, something that I can catch a lot of, right? Yep. yep. And, you know, and so I like to, I'm all about the, you know, and that's even our fishing contest on the Little Man of Steve, my buddy and I, keepers were three, but a brook trout, you have to let him go, it's only worth one. Well, mm-hmm. guess what? If he's got one big one in it, I'm going to throw over and get three or four little ones just yeah. to say I got more points than you, right? Yep. I mean, we got to let him go, but it's yeah. all about the win, right? Yeah, it's all about that and, ledger. And, and, like, and he, he's he got to clean that fish, and I, yep, I yep. get to go to the cozy kitchen and have big old pancakes yep. and strawberry, <laughs> strawberry <laughs> chip. Yeah, crack open a bag <laughs> of sausage. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so um, no, and uh, that's it, man. That's the gist of Yeah. Uh, when you think about your role as a rep, what do you? what's your approach to being a representative, what do you love most about serving Bay County in this capacity? So, and this is really crucial, um, getting somebody that is passionate about the county, right, that knows people from all sides. And it doesn't matter, like people that know I was a Republican growing up, right, they mm-hmm. didn't care. It was all about taking care of people, right, trying to find somebody that's going to do a job. Um, and this in all the, if somebody's, and we put bad people in positions at every level, right, that are doing it um, not for the right reasons. I really say anybody that's passionate about what they're going to do and uh, doesn't care. I don't care. A fireman can't care. I can't care whether you're Democrat or Republican when you come to my office, but I was the best UIA with a guy named Stone Kelly. Like we could get through and everybody would call our office even when they couldn't get their stuff done. We got that done because I know the UIA, unemployment insurance, 
I know it front and back. I paid it 20 years. I've never lost a case. Like I know how to help the employer and how to help the person, right? Mm. And during COVID, there was a, and it was, I mean, and they even limited how many people were allowed to help. I'm like, what? We can only help five people a week. So I'm like, so I'm like, okay, we'll send this case here. We'll do this, right? Mm. Like we could help and people and, you know, that support. And that's how you win, right? Like you win by taking care of the people that get you there, right? And I'm fine that you guys disagree. In fact, I like the fact that we disagree, right? Because my wife probably disagrees with me more than 50% of the time. Mm. So constituents, I only have to get 50.1%. And I always tell that to other Republicans. I, I get it. Like I get that we don't agree, but respect each other. And some of my friends on their side, Matt Flan is a good friend of mine. Like I, I disagree, but we do agree in a lot of things, right? Mm-hmm. So take what you agree on and make it so it's... That's what you pivot on, right? You don't pivot on the stuff that's the loudest in the news, right? Because yeah. that only burns bridges, yeah. you know? And, and I can be that person that stirs that pot all the time, but that also doesn't help us neither. Like, I, I like to do it in a nice way to see what the, the outcome is going to be. Mm-hmm. But you can, I can feel it ahead of time. Like, I can just bounce it off two of my sisters that are not uh, the same and, and see what they're going to say, and they, they give me the ear fill. So if I know I can, and I use my family a lot, so I, I as a political uh, person, I use them to bounce ideas off them to see the reaction, right? Yeah. Because if I'm getting it from here, right? It's I'm, like a little focus group. All yep. the time. Yep. And and all the, I know, say I don't have any brothers and I have brothers. I mean, I have people that have taken me as my little brother, my big brother, like, mm-hmm. I'll be your brother because you don't have one. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, does that mean I got to cut your deer? Like, <laughs> <laughs> what, what's in it for you? <laughs> yeah, but, but there are people like the Sean Gallagher, he's an artist. and the, Oh, I love the, Sean. So he does all my artwork and he does. Does he? Yeah. And you should ask him about some of, he would do my brat fest. So I do brat fest. Why? Just give away brats. Uh-huh. This next year, I'm going to do it on the bay, right? Oh, fun! And I, I figured it all out. And he does the carving. One year he did a turkey because I did turkey brats. One year he did a chicken. He did chicken brats. One year he carved a pig. And in a couple of years, you should ask him about some of the carvings he's done. Okay, because he'll show you some pictures, and then one picture you're going to be like, um, Sean, what the heck was this? <laughs> and he's like, you can't see it, and I, I, and you'll be like. Yeah, I see it all right. But so so you got to talk to him. But and I surround oh. myself by people that are, sometimes aren't like me, right? But like I can help them, in, in, or they can help me, right? So I always try to find myself. My I might not be the best speller, but I have a wife that never misses one, right? Uh-huh. Like, and she and you know that she corrects me, and I get used to it. And then finally, she just gave up. I'm like, well, that doesn't really help me anymore. <laughs> I need you. <laughs> yeah, and you try to surround yourself by. And this is in my business classes from Norton Elway SVSU. You need to surround yourself by everything that you're not. Oh uh, yeah. You're not. You're loud. You don't need anybody loud around you. And if you're opinionated on this area, you need to find somebody that has the opposite opinion of you every day. Yeah. So um, basically, you get beat up every day that brings you back down, but it, it also gets everybody else's perspective. Yeah. It sounds like the uh, I don't want to say cliche saying, but the saying the if you're the smartest person in the room, you need to find a new room. <laughs> I, I love this idea of compliment finding the common ground or finding the people that can do something better than you. And you can do something better than they can do. And I mean, that the essence of a great team. You know? and, and I learned that when I was sitting in that hospital bed back in 1991, April mm. 7th, and I had a tracheotomy, so I can't talk, right? I can't. And, and then my skull's cracked and they put the skulls. I live, thank God. But um, you can blink. That's and your sister singing church songs, and when you blink twice, it means that she's screwing up. She's <laughs> and you know sitting there helpless, right, to the world. Like you, you yeah. I mean, you don't know what's going on, and you're coming in and out of consciousness. And uh, then you have to realize you can't be the shit. I mean, you can't be the um, pot stirrer that you used to be, right? You can't think you're better than the rest. You got to figure out a way in this world to be um, leave it better than you got it because you're still here. Yeah. So that was that. That was like, and I was a radi- That was it. Like that was when I changed from. Um, and I was still working for the family and everything, but that's when I realized that I could not be that person that was the know-it-all person all the time. I mean, yeah. I set me ten like I can know it, but I listen, right? And then I, okay, so you have to be able to listen to somebody else's idea and not think you're always right. And their idea is not always right neither. But the idea that you don't listen, that that's where we lose it. And my mm-hmm. wife, I think sometimes the believes that I don't listen, like as, I just told you that, right? And sometimes that's just the maybe the husband um, yeah, scenario well, yeah, in a yeah, relationship. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm leaving a husband scenario in the relationship because yeah. I know they always listen. So yeah. I learned that four sisters, they always are. But needless to say, right? You have to, and sometimes you have to be told a couple times, or, or, or you have to really get it. Because right? mm-hmm. sometimes I'm going so fast, I didn't even catch what they said, and then I have to back up. Yeah, and that's it, right? Right. Well. It, it's been an absolute pleasure listening to you and having you here. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that we were able to meet. I'm glad that it, we were able to have this conversation because not everybody gets to sit down with their legislators for an hour and say, hey, let's get to know each other. Let's get to talk. And so, so man, people, if you're listening to this, if you're watching this, 
share this episode, share our episode with Kristen all over because it's so important for us in this community to know you guys and to know what, what it is you're doing and your values and where you came from and your personal story because I, we just we can connect and we can communicate in a better way. So I want to thank you for being here. Before we sign off, though, if somebody's listening to this and they're like, I, I have something I want to tell Timmy Beeson. I want to, I want to get a hold of him somehow. How would somebody in Bay County well, in, and, get a hold of you? And that's the most important part. You really need to go through our state website okay. or the page or our phone number. The 517-373-888's plus one. Uh, I, and I remember that based on how many kids, how many sisters. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you, you got to call because everything is tracked in our state. It, it really is. Those calls are tracked mm. and it, it comes in with your number. And like we do have, we have the finger flyers that call us every other day at 2.30 in the morning. There's some fun, I mean. I can imagine. Just like, but the other thing, you know, your school, have them reach out. Like I'm a big kid, right? So mm -hmm. if there's a school function going on and you want to see your state legislator act like a fool, I'm in, right? Because <laughs> I don't want my kids to think that I'm not the dad that's going to act like a fool because I'm okay with that fact. They, all, they shake yeah. their head and they're embarrassed. Yeah, you want to come make some burritos. Yes, yeah. break, break burritos or you <laughs> even play a game or do something right like i just uh, us legislators are real just like the anybody else mm -hmm. and i found this job not at the end of my career i call it like my new career i, I love mm -hmm. it right and uh, like i said i don't know what leads next and why the bay county people elect me to come um that's awesome and i always tell everybody when you guys are down to lansing now my ld is probably out x store you know he, he made sure we're here on time this is mm -hmm. what we do he's a lieutenant director that he's been with me from the beginning and he's going to stay with me um and you know they kind of almost make the same amount of mon money as us, but they actually kind of dictate and he does my schedule and stuff and oh, I love that. but the same thing is i say if you guys get to lansing the 12th floor man get off you find me and it's that three days a week i am gonna blow off lansing now he gets mad at that thing right but yeah. lansing's gonna be there you folks that come down and visit us right let me show you what i can show you and if you have kids um, I don't mind showing the kids because the kids, if we can get them to say, oh, this is cool, mm -hmm. oh, this is great, oh, I want to do this, I don't care what side of the aisle you're on, man. If we get people into politics, then it's not looked at as the job, oh, it's a politician, right? I want people to realize I'm just like everybody else. I mean, I go hunting, I process your deer, I'm a person, right? Yep. And there's every politician sometimes, the people, and I used to be the same way. I'm like, oh, man, I got to, back when Jeff Mays was a politician dating my sister, and I was like, oh, I got to go visit, and I didn't know where to go, right? Mm -hmm. Come to Lansing. Seek us out. I'll give you a popper, a snack stick in my thing, and we, we, we really want to make it so that way people get involved. Because if you don't get involved, right, mm -hmm. it's something about calling me, but the more people that are passionate that want to get involved with it, we win. Yeah. We, it doesn't matter because those are the people that can figure out how to bring us together. Bridge that gap, man. And, then, and mm. that's where my sister's, okay, you're doing a good job. I'm like, okay, I'm glad I get your approval today. Yes. Some of them call and let me know on a regular basis whether I'm doing a good <laughs> job or maybe you could do it a little better. Hi, Timmy. This is your sister. We have to talk. Yeah, I yeah, love it. They, they, they actually do. When can you call me? Yes. When I see that, I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> and I, take, and, uh, I, I try to take all of my sister's calls as soon as I can because – you know, sisters do hold grudges for a lot of years. So it's kind of funny how that goes. Oh, no, I don't do that. But really. <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. Well, thanks so much for stopping by. It's been a great conversation. Uh, I wish you the best in all of your work advocating for Bay County down in Lansing. And thanks so much to me. Yeah, and I'm going to bring you to uh, my show, and you'll be like, one of my first, and I'll have you make your own sausage, and we'll have it. Like, maybe you can be like, hey, by the way, I made this with Beeson, but, yeah. uh, and it's a lot of fun. And it, when you go to these little shops, right, we're the like we're the backbone of our area. I mean, there's five or six people working there right now from Uncle Pat. You got some three people working for my cousin Ron. You got JBs. You got four people out there. And, you know, and Larry's just did clothes, and that's too bad because they had mm -hmm. some, and those shops, right, the, those businesses, we got to figure out a way to keep them open, um, especially when we have this whole bridge thing going on because that's going to be a, it's going to be a dilemma here coming up to keep these little shops open because the traffic's going to get so congested mm -hmm. so and i'm trying to anything i could do if i could buy their stuff and bring it to lansing that's what i'm doing and and being that connection hey i want this much more so now i'm like the middleman i go down with a refrigerator and i'm pulling it out from all the different shops not just family shops I'm, i don't care if it's Cree Jack noodles i take his punch keys every year down oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah once again right <laughs> <laughs> it's about bringing what we have why people got to come back here. So that's what I, my push is, is like, yeah. hey, man, I'll bring it down, but you can go to Bay County. We got five meat shops like this. We got three bakeries Heck like yeah, this. Yeah. yeah, There's even more where I come yeah, from. Yeah, wait till you, you got to come downtown. <laughs> like, you got to come downtown. If you want to see a pub crawl, let me show you what's going yeah, on. So, uh, I love it. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Tim. Yep. Yeah.